It's time to wrap up our newscast with the amazing Anna Lagasse, who is an autoimmune arthritis advocate and has received the COVID-19 vaccine. Uh, Anna is a, an advocate and healthcare strategy and development professional living in Boston. Uh, she was diagnosed with systemic juvenile idiopathic arthritis at age 11. She uses her ex expertise as a patient to consult with healthcare startups, pharma companies, and other healthcare orgs, collaborating to incorporate the patient voice into healthcare design, technology, and policy reform. Anna, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, I'm just going to jump right in because you are our final interview, and I... I, we had a lot of amazing people today, so I can't say that we've saved the best for last, but you're pretty amazing. Um, and what I'm really excited about is that you got the COVID-19 vaccine and I have some very serious vaccine envy. <laughs> I'm coining it, hashtag vaccine envy. Um, so, so tell me, how did you make the decision to get the vaccine as a person living with autoimmune diseases? I mean, I feel like a lot of people, I started watching, you know, vaccine development from its inception, right? And, you know, I think one of my biggest concerns at the beginning was, would we end up with a vaccine that has some sort of live virus in it, right? Because that's sort of an automatic disqualifier for most of us with autoimmune diseases. So as soon as I sort of, you know, was following the science, following, you know, this mRNA, but knowing that there wasn't going to be live virus in it, that was pretty much it for me. It, it, my decision was more or less made right up front that as soon as this is available to me, I'm going to get it. Um, you know, having said that, as soon as both Moderna and Pfizer had gotten their emergency use authorizations from the FDA, we had a lot more public facing data than we had previously. Um, talk to all of my doctors. So for me, not all, but uh, for me, most importantly, my rheumatologist, cardiologist, and PCP. And all of them felt very strongly that I get it as soon it was as soon as it was available to me versus waiting for any sort of, you know, med medication specific guidance, right? Because you know, as much as we all sort of fall under this autoimmune umbrella, most of us are on different medications, right? So we have different considerations. Um, I'm very fortunate to have a PCP that is very, very proactive as far as vaccinating me for everything, not just my annual flu shot, you know, HPV, Hep A, Hep B, both, you know, pneumonia vaccines. And at no point in the last five, six, seven years have we ever held my infusion or my treatment for a vaccine. So I felt very comfortable making this decision to ultimately say, I don't have guidelines in front of me. I'm going to get it when it's offered. Um, and no, a lot of this is because right around the time that, you know, approvals were coming out and state plans were coming out. I live in Massachusetts and as the plan is written, it's really unclear where autoimmune patients and patients on immune weakening drugs like truly lie. Um, in this phased approach. So at that point, I was just sort of like, whenever I'm presented the opportunity, I'm going to get it, which is what I did. Um, and sure enough, I've had first and second dose. And maybe last week or the week before, my rheumatologist reached out with the drug specific guidelines. Now, all things considered, as far as what they're recommending, as far as, you know, holding your infusion a week or whatever, I really sort of I only missed it by like a week what they were saying and talked to my rheumatologist about this and her thoughts were, this is going to change again when we have more data. These are very sort of precautionary guidelines that manufacturers and other organizations are putting out. They'll likely change in six months when we have more data. So she was just like, I think we made the right decision. You got it, you know, as soon as it was available to you. And also, you know, holding medications comes with its own set of risks, right? Do we let my arthritis potentially come out of this well-controlled state that it's in when our medical system is completely, you know, to the brink, to the max? Um, you know, so it's it's a balancing act, but ultimately I, I, I feel good about the decision that I made, even not having all of the data that, you know, ideally we would all have when we're making this sort of decision. 
Yeah. And I think it's interesting because that's much of our life with autoimmune conditions is living in the unknown and you have to make the best decision that is, you know, there's always going to be benefit and risk and you have to make the decision with what you believe is going to be the most benefit to you. Right. Um, I still believe that for, and firmly that the risk of not knowing how my body would be able to fend off uh, COVID-19, somebody who has a risk of, or not a risk, but a history of history of serious infections requiring hospitalization. My original diagnosis is systemic juvenile idiopathic arthritis. Um, going back and going through my medical records, I always, you know, I always talk about something that happened to me as a child when I had really severe pericarditis to the extent that I ended up in acute congestive heart failure. I was put in a medically induced coma for a period of several weeks so my body could heal um, and other you know, organ systems were at risk of failure. And as I've gone through and pulled all of that and consulted with some of you know, my doctors today, all of them feel really strongly that as a child, I've already experienced a cytokine storm. So to, for me, at least, this was a no brainer. There's a lot of risk over here in what I believe to be a much smaller level of risk over here as far as getting a vaccine versus taking my chances with, you know, any sort of potential COVID infection. Yep. I think that's an outstanding way to balance it out and look at it and something that a lot of the folks who are watching are experiencing right now. Uh, and so I appreciate your candor and sharing that. Uh, so now you got the vaccine. Tell us what was your experience like? Did you experience any side effects? Yeah. So, I mean, I want to say up front that my, ex my experience was really intense, but it was more like emotionally intense to get it. So I worked for an academic medical center in Boston. Um, we had a really robust supply at the beginning of this rollout. And at the time that it was offered to me, it was actually New Year's Eve day of 2020. So this is really, really early in the rollout. But at the time we had already vaccinated all of our providers who were taking care of COVID patients, all of our providers who won't, who weren't. Um, and I shouldn't just say providers, we're talking about anybody within the organization that was patient facing, anyone who interacts with patient patients, whether it's clinicians, housekeeping, food services, everybody. And even after all of that, even after everybody had elected to get theirs, they still had supply, they still had appointments. So I had gotten an email that morning and hesitated, truly hesitated. I felt like I was cutting the line, I really did. Especially in Massachusetts where the guidelines are so wishy-washy for autoimmune patients. And it was actually a colleague of mine who picked up the phone and was like, are you getting your vaccine? I was like, mm, I don't really know. She's like, Anybody needs to go in and get their vaccine. You're not skipping the line. We need shots and arms. Get in there. Um, and so I did. And, you know, the actual experience was really intense. You know, I go into our vaccine clinic. It's my colleagues. It's my friends. It's people who have been on the front lines for almost a year now. And people, you know, it, it, the energy is incredible. Everybody is so happy. There's like palpable hope for once. And so I sat down in the chair and just immediately started crying, you know, perfectly normal reaction to have. But, you know, from a more practical standpoint, as I'm sitting in that chair crying, um, this sort of intake for having your vaccine is a lot different, right, than just getting your, you know, flu shot every year. You're going to get asked about your medical history, specifically about your history of allergies or allergic reactions. And then you're going to consent in a way, you know, in a very sort of heavy handed, this drug is approved, but it's under an emergency use authorization. It's just, it's a different thing. So I think if you're getting the vaccine, be prepared for it to feel a little different than your average flu jab every year. Um, and so, you know, I got my shot. I had to wait 30 minutes instead of the standard 15, just because I have a history of um, drug allergies. I'm not contraindicated. It is all just like abundance of caution. So if you're made to wait 30 minutes, it's really not a big deal. Um, it's just to make sure everybody stays safe. For my first shot, zero side effects to the point where I was just like, oh gosh, it's like, is this working? Are we okay? Um, my second shot, I started experiencing 
pretty severe side effects within six hours of that second dose. So it had a really intense headache, very light sensitive, muscle pain, joint pain, um, nausea, upset stomach, diarrhea, not great. Um, but it really only lasted 24 hours. Um, and by day two, I felt fine. I was back to running, sort of doing my usual thing. And the thing that I keep trying to tell everybody, especially healthy folks who aren't used to taking, you know, different drugs or treatments and going down for a full day is if the side effects were 10, 20 times worse than they were, I still would have gotten it. No question. You know, 24 hours and feeling pretty lousy, still worth it. Still worth it. Thank you, Anna. This is I, like I love your honesty, and you know, as Dr. Ruth said at the beginning of our newscast, uh, if if you're experiencing some of those side effects, it's okay. That means it's working. That means that your body is learning how to fight COVID, um, and so it is a it is a positive thing. And if you, I should I should caveat that if you don't have any side effects, that's okay too. The vaccine mm -hmm. is. <laughs> um, but it is often a sign if you are experiencing side effects that it's working. So, um, you know, thank you, Anna, for sharing that and for being honest. Um, and, and so that people know what to expect, because when we know what to expect, it does help us feel a little bit more comfortable and less surprised when something, you know, may happen. That's the biggest question I get asked from people is side effects. Um, and I tell everybody the same thing that I was thrilled. I was thrilled to know that my immune system of all immune systems on the planet was doing what it was supposed to do. And it was mounting a response. I think I would have been, even knowing the science, even knowing that you can still be mounting that, you know, immune response in the absence of side effects. And we're specifically seeing that in older populations, you know, 55, 65, 75 plus are having a lot less severe side effects than younger folks, which I think is important to keep in mind. Um, but that's, you know, it's the number one question I ask, I get asked by folks and I try to be honest because I think, you know, I work from home right now and I got my vaccine on a Thursday and Friday, you know, I really had to take it, you know, take it easy to the best of my ability, ability and, and be in communication with colleagues about sort of what my expectations were for the day. And I think that's important for folks to be able to plan um, and sort of juggle whatever responsibilities they have, whether it's work, childcare, elder care, whatever it is. Um, you know, obviously everybody has different priorities that they have to balance outside of just the general sort of risk and cost benefit of analysis of getting the vaccine itself. Yeah. Okay, so, and I feel like you've alluded to this a bit throughout, but I'd love to know what your advice is to all of the autoimmune patients who are tuning in but are unsure about getting the vaccine. So it's really hard, right, to give specific advice because like I said, we all fall under this autoimmune umbrella, but our situations are so different. I'm on a biologic medication. That's different than being on other biologics or rituxin or methotrexate. You know, there's a lot of different considerations. Um, what I would say though is now is the time to get short you don't wanna wait until your number comes up in line in whatever state you live in. You don't wanna wait until that last minute to get in touch with your doctors to make that decision. Um, you know, Interestingly enough, when I reached out to my rheumatologist, she told me that our specialty pharmacist at the hospital was really the one tracking guidelines, not her, because she has more of this macro view of all of these different biologics that are getting administered to our patients across you know, a variety of practice areas. So I talked to my room, I talked to her, um, I talked to my cardiologist, you know, a lot of folks listening today probably have comorbidities from their disease. So, you know, you might have more than one doctor to track down. Um, also PCPs, if you have a good one, um, they're also a lot closer to vaccine guidelines, believe it or not, um, than a lot of specialists are. And so that's a lot of things to wrangle, um, you know, in advance of potentially being able to get the vaccine. So I think to the extent that you can be prepared um, for when your number comes up. Now is the time to do it. And also, you know, if your drug does require you holding a dose, delaying a dose, skipping a dose, you know, uh, extending, you know, your infusion sort of cycle, 
you're going to want to plan that too, right? You can't just, not all of us can just get on a state website and make an appointment for next available. You know, there's some things that you have to consider. And of course, the practical aspect of planning for side effects with, you know, work, childcare, elder care, whatever it may be. Um, and, you know, that's probably for folks who are leaning towards getting it. You still feel really unsure and you feel unsure of the science. Something that I have told a lot of my healthy friends um, who are going through their own risk calculus, it's probably a little bit different than ours, is that, you know, we can talk all the, you know, we can talk all day long about, um, you know, no, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't rushed through, no, no steps were skipped, none of that, whatever. Um, but to me, it's the size of these trials that are the most encouraging. And I think a lot of us with autoimmune diseases, we step back and we really think about the drugs that we've been on over the course of our disease and treatment. There have been so many more people in these trials than have ever been, been in any of the trials for the drugs we're taking every single day. And you know, it's frustrating that autoimmune, that folks with autoimmune diseases aren't represented in these broader clinical trials. But you know, if you really step back and you think about your treatment, you think about you know, some of the risks that we're all taking being on immune weakening drugs already. Um, those of us who were diagnosed before biologics existed and were in early clinical trials, those of us who've been um, prescribed off-label use for drugs, um, it, it's helped me sort of frame how I, you know, how I think about this, that Unfortunately, there's so little known about different aspects of autoimmune diseases that in just treat the course of treating our diseases, we've taken much bigger risks than this and continue to do so every day. That's not fair. It's not great. I wish that was not the reality for all of us right now. But I think if you can sort of frame your thinking around the science, the risk benefit, um, that's given me a lot of comfort to know that tens of thousands more people have been trialed for these vaccines than were ever trialed for any of the drugs that I've been on in the last 25 years. So I hope that sort of maybe giving some context about around the risks that we're all thinking about taking right now might be helpful to some folks. Unbelievably helpful. What a fabulous and powerful point. Seriously. I, I mean, it does. It really helps you frame your thinking. This is a big decision for a lot of people. And so um, I, having all this information at hand and Anna, having your thought process and how, how you made this decision is so valuable for all of our patients and caregivers watching. So thank you for uh, always showing up and always <laughs> being an incredible advocate. You are um, honestly, Anna is one of the most brilliant advocates. I know I work with a lot of patients and advocates and she just is a rock star and we are lucky at Arda to have the opportunity to work with her. So thank you for being here today, Anna. Thanks, Lily. You know, nobody loves to talk about vaccines more than I do. So this that is really, is um, it, it's just great. And I really appreciate the opportunity.